Okay. Yeah, why don't we why don't we just pray and we'll start, right? Okay. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Let's ask the Lord to strengthen us. Um, let's ask the Lord to fill us. Right? We see in Ephesians 5, it talks about be filled with the Spirit. Right? And uh, Paul is writing to the believers in the Ephesian church, saying be filled with the Spirit. Right? Um, it's an important aspect of a believer's life, to be filled with the Spirit. Okay, so let's just ask the Lord to, to fill us with His Spirit right now. And um, we ask Him in faith, saying, God, you fill us, knowing fully well that He's not a partial God. Uh, the prayer that we are praying is in line with His will. What we are asking Him is in line with His will. So, yeah, so let's just ask Him, saying, God, you fill us, Lord. Fill us, O God. Yes, Lord, this morning we, we come before you expectantly, God, and um, just desiring your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Come, Lord, fill us. Come, Lord, strengthen us, God. Fill us, O oh God. Fill us to overflowing, God. Fill us, Lord, so that we might overflow, God, with your presence. Come, Lord. And as a simple act of faith, just put our hands out you know, to the Lord and say, Lord, you fill us. You know, as an act of, as a symbol of receiving from him. I just put our hands out and say, Lord, you fill us. Well, I'm here to receive from you. I'm just here to receive from you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And just be mindful of, uh, you know, what the Lord reveals, what the Lord speaks. We know that, you know, he's um, is a prayer answering God. And um, you read that scripture, you know, even though human, even as human fathers know how to give good gifts to the children, even so, more so, our Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, I just pray for a fresh infilling, Father God, this morning, a fresh infilling of Father God of your spirit for each one of us, O oh God. For those of us who are weary, those of us who are, Lord, um, Lord, in pain, maybe those of us who are confused, Lord, for those of us, Lord, who, who really need, Lord, your touch, the assurance of your touch, of your presence. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. Yes, Lord. I just believe the Lord is saying, you know, for those of us who who feel that, um, you know, we've been like uh, kind of crippled emotionally, right? It's not a physical thing, but emotionally, just feel crippled saying, you know, I'm unable to walk. You know, emotionally, right? I'm unable to function the way God wants me to function. You know, I, I believe that the Lord is um, really strengthening, and the Lord can strengthen, and the Lord will strengthen. And the Lord is strengthening you, right? Strengthening you so that you can rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. You know, just like an empty wheelchair, right? Emotionally, just rise up and walk. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for who you are, God. Prayer answering, wonder working, supernatural, powerful God. We thank you, Master. We thank you for strengthening us in the inner man, God. No man can do that, Lord. No person can do that, but only you, God. No, I believe the Lord is, um, is reminding us that he can see through us, you know, 
man can see only on the outside but god can see through so you know we can be just ourselves in his presence we can say lord i'm hurting or lord i'm rejoicing and lord i'm full of faith or lord i'm i need faith you know we can just be ourselves so there's no pressure to be someone else in god's presence there's no pressure to be someone else there's no pressure to put on an act right we can just just be ourselves lord we thank you lord for this awesome privilege of calling you abba father we thank you lord that you've given us permission to come to the holy of holies and you've given us lord the invitation lord to come to your presence with boldness lord with courage god and we do that lord we just lift our eyes and focus on you god lift up our eyes focus on you god jesus thank you thank you lord thank you for making your way thank you for inviting us to your presence and thank you lord for filling us god with your spirit today thank you for strengthening us god you know can we just go ahead and thank him just open our mouths and just thank the lord you know just say god lord i thank you thank you for what you're doing with me in my life right now today god thank you for all the things that you have in store for me today and i believe the lord wants to meet with us and you know every day you know he wants to do something in us he wants to take out certain things out of us he wants to put certain things in us and so we can just say lord i thank you god for what you have in store for me today thank you jesus thank you jesus you have the right of way lord in my life you have full permission god lord to do what you want lord in my life lord lord we thank you we can trust you god we can th we thank you lord we can lay down our lives oh god for you god we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. We're so glad that you are in our lives, Father God. We're so glad, oh, Father God, that you are in our lives. Yes, Master. We thank you that you will lead us from strength to strength, oh, God. We thank you that you will lead us from glory to glory, oh, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. You will lead us. You are the gentle shepherd, oh, God. You are the soon and coming King, O God. You are the one who is holy, Lord. You are the one who is righteous, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning, God. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for covering us with your righteousness, Lord. Thank you for washing us with your precious blood, O God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for forgiving us, O Father God. Thank you for, Lord, lifting us up, O Master God, when we are down, O Father God. And thank you, Lord, you are lifting each one of us today, God. And you are reminding us, God, that we are seated with you in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lord, what an awesome privilege. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name and we come at this day. We come at this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, praise God. Okay. Um, let's pick up some where we left um last class okay so we were looking at um i think when we wound up we were looking at the work of the holy spirit in the lord jesus um death and resurrection right is that is that what we ended with last class okay i think that's what we looked at right okay so uh, let's look at a few scriptures that after his resurrection and prior to his ascension um like what did the holy spirit um do Right. Um, so we can look at John chapter 20 and verse 22. Okay, John 20, verse 22. The Lord Jesus said this. He he did this extraordinary thing. Okay. Um, and we see this um in um in John 20 and verse 22. It says, uh, and when he had said this, okay, uh, that is he appears to the disciples in a closed room, right? John chapter 20 okay verse 19 onwards he appears to the disciples after his resurrection in a closed room and the doors were shut and then he tells them peace be with you okay and uh, in verse 22 we say we see this and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit okay so we we see this instance that the lord jesus ministered the holy spirit to them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, so the now the thing is this. He is risen from the dead. He's gone to the cross. He died. He rose again. And he's saying, you know, here he's meeting the disciples and he's saying, receive the Holy Spirit. 
But if you recall, he also told them, wait in Jerusalem till you are endued with power on high, till you receive the Father's promise. Yes or no? Yeah, John last chapter, and I think it's uh, verse 49 or something. Um, let's look at that. Um, so John chapter 24, right? 21. Um, sorry, uh, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 20, uh, the last chapter, 24, or I'm not sure. Um, yeah, 24. So he says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry await in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power on high. Okay. So when this is just before he ascends. But before that, when he appears to them, he tells them, okay, uh, he breathed on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so so what is that? So we we can conclude that this is the place where the disciples were actually born again. Right. Till then, they were following the Lord, right? They were following Him. They were, um, yeah, they were, He was being taught. They were being taught. You, you know, they were, they were even ministering, and with the power that He gave them, the authority that He gave them. But here, He's saying, receive the Holy Spirit, right? So, which means they they had the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit here, and after that is when uh, he says, you wait. So he's talking about an, another event, which will be the, the infilling or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon their lives, right? Okay, so we see that. Okay, um, and the verse that we read just now, he says, wait in Jerusalem. Okay, wait in Jerusalem till you are filled with power from on high. Okay, and they did, and they were filled with power from on high, right? So that is what we see in, in the book of Acts. Okay. Okay, any doubts so far in whatever we have read, in whatever we have studied? Um, any questions that you might have? Um, anything at all? Any doubts, any questions? Yes, no? Okay, if it is yes, you can say this. If it is no, you can say this. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, online class, if you have any doubts, any questions, you know, feel free to post them on the on the chat, right? Okay, okay, so now uh, we're going to look at um, <clears throat> uh, the book of Acts. The book of Acts is interesting, okay, because the book of Acts is where we see the New Testament church being birthed, meaning the New Testament church actually came into being, the church as we know it, right? Um, came into being in the book of Acts. We read about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We read about the, you know, uh, what accompanied the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we we see all that happening in the book of Acts, and also very interestingly, you know, we see what the disciples or how they uh, how they did ministry, right? In, in we see in the book of Acts, and the book of Acts actually is our pattern if you want to say that you know it's it's our example right we are the church we are a new testament church and the book of acts is actually our example you know we we can go there and we can we can see how god moved and how god used the disciples or led the disciples to minister and we we can conclude okay you know if i want to uh, do ministry or if I am deciding to, let's say, plant a church and do you know, a ministry, this is a great example. This is a great pattern. This is a great you know, place to go and say, okay, this is how we can be also. Okay? So, so we're going to look at the book of Acts and see um, the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? right throughout, we see many instances where the Holy Spirit is mentioned. We've seen some of them uh, earlier also, but we're just going to go through uh, several verses and uh, we're going to learn about how the Holy Spirit ministered, what he did, okay, so that we can learn and say, okay, this is available for us today also. Like This is available for us in our day and time, right? Yeah? Okay, so let's uh, turn to uh, Acts chapter um, Acts chapter 1, and we're just going to quickly read through uh, all these verses that are listed there in your notes. Okay, so we are in chapter 5, right? 
uh, work of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at Acts chapter 1 and verses 5 to 8. Okay, so the Lord Jesus' words. So he's saying, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time uh, restore the kingdom to Israel? Um, he, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which your father has put in his own authority. Verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so um, I, I want you to, uh, you know, tell me, like, what do you learn from these three verses or four verses, five, six, seven, eight, four verses? What do you learn from this? What is your understanding of this? Okay, anyone from here? Prince, what is your name? Huh? Francis, okay. okay. Francis, what do you understand from this? Holy Spirit? Knows everything, okay. But is that what we um, understand from there? Just these verses, what we read just now. Acts chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. When you read that, what do you understand? Prince? <clears throat> and there's no wrong answer, actually. You know, just, what is from the text, right? So what do you understand from that? Uh-huh. Right, that's verse 7. Right, okay. So th that's fine. Okay, what else? Um, that's that the Father knows. Right? Uh, the, but about the Holy Spirit, what, what is it? We're talk talking about the Holy Spirit, studying about the Holy Spirit. So about the Holy Spirit, what do you understand? Anyone? This row? Mm. Right. So there is a parallel. There is a baptism of water, but there is also baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a reality. Right. And we see that it is a separate event altogether. Now, these are disciples who are following the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is telling the disciples, the followers, that you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Right. He had breathed on them and they said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they, they already had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So when we relate it to our lives, so we can we can you know we can say the same thing okay uh, you know as believers well we have the Holy Spirit that's how you know we got convicted and we received Jesus uh, into our lives in my and we have the Holy Spirit but there is an event there is a separate if you want to use the word experience that or truth that God wants us Jesus wants us to receive which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit okay and many of us have. Right? Prayed for or received. Okay, I'm just going to look through some of the comments here. The power of power that Jesus talked about to empower them and testify and be perceived witnesses is what we, they had to wait for. Absolutely right. Um, though the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, they will receive power. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, they will there will be fulfillment. We can gain power. Right. Um, it's only through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, wonderful. So that so that's an, that's the second part, right? So we see that. Verse 8, you shall receive power. And what is this power for? It is to witness. Okay. So very clear. It is to power, witness. So, so we also understand that, hey, we need Holy Spirit power to witness. Right? Holy Spirit power to witness, to share about Christ. But the thing is this. It is to witness the way Jesus ministered. Okay, which means not just words, but following the words. You, you see that he, he always taught, he always preached. But 
he also reached out and he he prophesied he healed he delivered all that and all that requires holy spirit power and all that uh, you know all that is part of us being witnesses which is what we see in the book of acts right they were witnesses they went out they preached they but it was with power with holy spirit power right so which is the reality for all of us as believers because it's it was for them right so that's a very important truth that we understand and we learn okay okay let's go down to verse 16 um Verse 16, we see men and brethren, uh, this is Peter, right? Uh, let's read verses 15 and 16. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120 and said, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Okay. So this scripture had to be fulfilled. He's referring to, uh, you know, uh, referring to the prophecy about how the uh, how uh, Messiah would suffer and so on. And he's specifically saying this is what the Holy Spirit spoke before. Right. So the Holy Spirit, who knows what is in the past, okay, who knows what is in the future or what will happen, right? He's saying. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke by the mouth of David. So, so David may not even, you know, would not even have understood what is it, but then he prophesied, and he prophesied by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and is concerning uh, Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested uh, Jesus. So, um, so, so, what, what is that truth that we learn here? About the Holy Spirit. Simple thing. What is it? What do we understand or what do we learn about the Holy Spirit now in this verse? Do we learn anything about the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Right. Right, so the Holy Spirit, who knows the end from the beginning, Holy Spirit is God, all-knowing, omniscient, right? That's one of the characters of God we saw, omniscient. So he knows the end from the beginning, and he spoke through man, which is prophecy. Right? God speaking to man, through man, is prophecy. And, uh, you know, of course, we learn about prophecy, uh, uh, but we see that it has... Uh, prophecy also has a foretelling aspect, right? The work of the Spirit also has a foretelling aspect. So he foretold of what would come. So can he foretell through us what would happen? Yes, right? So that's the thing, you know, that's the thing that we understand now. Okay, I'm just expanding our understanding. Yeah, Holy Spirit, who knows the end from the beginning, who's all-knowing, he can speak to us about what is to come right maybe in our own lives right so we can be prepared maybe about something else so that we can be so it's a very you know it's a practical thing right so we are looking at the book of acts and how how we ministered and how we moved and uh, and we need to draw from these truths and say lord today in our day and time lord you move in the same way right so he, he can foretell he does right? that is what we see Okay, let's look at um, uh, chapter 2. Okay, chapter 2, verses 1 and one to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance okay so something supernatural happened something which you know affected the natural environment there was a sound of a rushing wind and the whole house uh, it filled the whole house 
where they were sitting. So there was a rushing wind, you know, you know, uh, when there's a sound of the wind um, rushing through, you know that. And then there was this sound. So they heard that sound. There were about 120 of them, right? And then it says that there appeared divided tongues as a fire. One sat upon each of them. So that also something that was visible, something that was supernatural that was happening. And it says in verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, So these, this is something that they did not plan. They did, this is something they did not learn. They did not prepare for. But the Holy Spirit gave them utterance, which means they received these words from the Holy Spirit and they spoke them out. They could not help but speak them out. Okay, so that is what happened here. The Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, in the verses following that, <clears throat> uh, I just want to mention that, like we see people's response to it. Okay, what was what was how do the people who heard this, who heard the supernatural work, how do they respond? Did they say Hallelujah, praise the Lord? No, we, we, we see varied responses. Okay, somewhere. Like um, it says, verse 12, so they were all amazed. Okay, Some were amazed. Why? Because they knew these people. They knew know that they were Jews. And how do they learn our language? Okay, So they were speaking in an earthly language, but they did not learn. So they were speaking. How did they learn? Right? And because they were people from Crete and people fr uh, from the Arabian uh, region. And say, then we hear them speaking in our language so they heard them speak and in the same verse it says and they were perplexed right perplexed meaning they were a little worried they were a little anxious what is this right? because they could not understand it they were perplexed okay verse 13 it says others mocking okay so they made fun of it okay so they were amazed they were perplexed they they said they were ridiculing they were making fun saying okay what is this you know they were all drunk so we see all kinds of reactions there okay let's go down to uh, verses 17 and 18 and here peter he's referring to the prophecy of uh, prophet joel and he's saying in verse 17 and 18 and it shall come to pass in the in the last days says god that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Okay. So this is Prophet Joel. And many years later, hundreds of years later, Peter stands up and he says, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. These people are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is what the prophet said, that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Let, let, let's read that. What does it say? What is, the out, what is the outcome of that? Just look at verse 17 and tell me. What is the outcome of that? They will prophesy they shall prophesy meaning that they will speak inspired words they will receive words from the holy spirit i will speak it out well did they receive words from the holy spirit did they receive utterance from the holy spirit yes they did did they speak it out yes they did yes it was in different languages they spoke it out right they received utterance from the holy spirit and they spoke it out and peter saying this is what it is and this is what Joel prophesied. Okay, then your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, that didn't happen right then, right? That didn't happen there. But he's saying this is what will happen visions. What is a vision? A picture, okay? Something that you see when you're awake. Okay, and something when you see when you're sleeping is dreams, right? Okay, that's a that's a good ex, uh, I think explanation. Okay, when you're awake, vision; when you're sleeping, dreams. Um, and there's more to it, of course. When we study the prophetic, we see that 
in a dream there's a vision you know all that thing. so okay and so vision and dreams okay great so he's saying that as a result of the work of the holy spirit you will see visions so peter is saying you know this is what it is so we can be open holy spirit will speak in these ways we can be expectant holy spirit you can speak in these ways right so when you go to bed you can say god you speak to me in dreams right we can be expectant lord you speak to me whatever you want you speak to me lord i'm anyway i'm available speak to me speak to me in visions what is it god that you want to show me show me lord right we don't have to be closed because this is for the new testament church right we can be open we can be expectant and say holy spirit this is what you did you do it in my life right okay then um let's look at verse 33 okay okay uh, i think it's just a you know it's a re reiteration therefore being exalted to the right hand of god and having received from the father the promise of the holy spirit he poured out this which you now see and hear okay verses 38 to 30 uh, 39 okay this is again a very interesting very important verse then peter said to them okay it is in response to their question okay what did what was their question when they when they, after you know peter shared this message this first message their question was what shall we do why did they ask that because they were cut to the heart they were convicted oh, right because um, they were talk, they, because peter was talking about how, how you know you rejected christ he was crucified god raised him up so they were convicted and they said no what shall we do then peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, he's talking to his immediate audience, whoever was gathered there. Right? He's saying, repent, you be baptized, there will be remission of sins, meaning you will your sins will be cleansed, you'll be forgiven, and you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's one package right so that is something that for the immediate audience okay verse 39 for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the lord our god will call okay so what do you learn from that verse 39 sorry The Holy Spirit is, is for everyone. Yeah. So this gift of the Holy Spirit is not only for that that time or that audience that Peter was addressing right there, but Peter made it very clear as he was speaking by the Holy Spirit that it is for them, their children who may be there, may not have been there, and to all who are afar off, as many as our Lord will call. And that includes us. And the future generations right so it's made very clear that jesus salvation through jesus outpouring of the holy spirit being filled with the holy spirit again jesus the baptizer being baptized in the holy spirit is for anyone whom the lord will call whom who will call upon the lord very clear right so that is something that we see okay um and the fact that uh, every believer can be filled with the Holy Spirit, or every believer can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. Let's move to Acts chapter four. Okay, Acts chapter four and verse eight. You know, um, we see in Acts chapter two. You know, we see that the disciples were there. They were all filled with the Spirit. They spoke in tongues. Peter gave this first message, right, of the New Testament church. Many were saved. They asked him what we should do, and he gave them, okay, this is what you need to do. And it says in third, verse 40, 
you know, with many other words, he testified and exhorted. And then those who gladly, okay, let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 41, right? Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. So we see all that happening. Okay. Now, Acts chapter 4 and verse 8, then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what is happening here? It's another instance that he is actually facing the um, rulers and elders and scribes in the temple because the Peter and John, what happens here is Peter and John had actually healed the man who was lame, right? Who was sitting at the bay gates begging. Peter and John went there and uh, Lord Jesus healed that man. Right. So now they are being arrested. They are being brought and they're saying, you know, why are you doing this? By what name are you doing this? Right? Who gave you the authority to do this? So in response to this, um, Peter says, and then we read that Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. So we see this, this outpouring, this baptism, being filled with the Spirit is not an isolated one-time thing. There can be many times where we are filled by the Holy Spirit. Okay, this morning we just prayed, we said, fill us, Lord. Right? So it's scriptural. Right? It's not just the first time when you got filled and you prayed in tongues. Or It can be multiple times. So Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he addressed them, addressed the rulers and the elders, and, and he spoke to them. Right? Okay. Um, Verse 31, again, it says here, um, verse 31, what happens is Peter and John are reprimanded by these authorities and they let them go. Okay, they said, now you, you should not do this. You cannot speak in the name of Jesus. You cannot minister in the name of Jesus. Go back now. Okay. So when they, they, they went, Peter and John go back and they tell all the disciples, hey, this is what happened. You know, we... I went there, Lord Jesus healed this man. He had actually, he could not walk from birth, but the Lord Jesus strengthened his legs and ankles and he could walk. And the people, you know, they, they told us not to preach in the name of Jesus, right? All that. So they gathered together and they prayed. Verse 24, Acts 4, verse 24 says, And they heard that they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And, you know, they prayed. Now, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness, right? Verse 31, chapter 4, verse 31. So again, they prayed to the Lord. They said, God, you know, these people are doing this. They are, you know, forbidding us to, you know, minister. God, you know, you you give us that boldness. They, they, they're saying, you know, Lord, you, um, uh, you, your servants with all boldness, it says in verse 29, right? Now look on their threads and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Verse 30, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of the holy servant Jesus. And it says here, yeah, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is again another, another time where they were all filled by the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, you know, what the Lord Jesus said would happen, happened. Okay, He said that you will minister, you'll be endured with power, and you will be witnesses. Right? It says here that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word with boldness. They, they were witnesses. Right. With boldness, with courage. Okay, that is something that we see here. Okay. Um, then Acts chapter five, verses one to nine. Okay. Um, Acts chapter five is about Ananias and Sapphira. They sell. They possession. Ananias comes. He pretends as if this is the everything. 
and he comes and gives it because those days people were actually doing that they were they said okay uh, you know this is a possession why don't you take it why don't you use it use it for ministry okay so all that was happening now ananias actually part of it he kept it and he brought it and it was as if you know it was a as if this was the whole thing so peter said ananias why has satan filled your heart to lie to the holy spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself right verse 4 you have not lied to men but to god okay so something that we learn here holy spirit is deity holy spirit is god you know he is worthy of worship he is this is part of the triune Godhead. So, you know, that is established here. Okay. And the fact is that uh, that God can be, you know, Holy Spirit can be lied to, right? Uh, he knows everything. He sees everything. He hears everything. Right? So that is something that we see. Verse 9 says, how it is, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband. So, uh, you know, um, what we see is that there was a great outpouring, mighty outpouring. The glory of the Lord was manifest in an amazing way. And so also, you know, the level of holiness and everything was, you know, was there. So um, we see that judgment also was immediate. Okay, He was pure, holy, there's great glory being revealed. And it says here that they, because of that, they died. Okay. So uh, we see that in Acts chapter uh, 5. Okay, Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Okay, here, uh, what do we see here? Uh, let's, let's read, right? Uh, and in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Okay, so the early church had the first problem, and it's, it had something to do with logistics, distribution of food. Um, okay, so then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. Okay, so they are going to solve this logistical problem so they say, okay, you take seven men from among you. Okay, so these are the qualifications. What do they say? Seven men of good reputation. Second one is full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Okay. So uh, this was something, the qualification was good reputation, which means that you know people would know of them, and say, okay, these are good guys, right? We know them, we've seen them, we've observed them, we know what they do, so they are good. Okay. Then second one is full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Okay, which means that these were people who were acquainted with God in this manner. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So what task are they going to do? They're going to do in distribution of food, serve food, right? Um, and and uh, to to all those um, you know the, the women who had lost their husbands, so this is what they're going to do. But the qualification was that they'll be good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, which means that these were, these were men who were acquainted with God. And if we go down further, uh, we see um, we we read about this people, right? They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, uh, and all these things. And then it says here. Uh, in verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. So it's not like they they just distributed food, but they were actually, you know, full of the Holy Spirit and they ministered in the power of the Spirit. Right? This is what they say. You know, they might be doing, you know, they might be ushering, they might be, you know, uh, laying out the chairs. And, you know, in today's context, you know, it could be like that. They could be fixing the mic, whatever setup, but they. They were full of the Holy Spirit, and they did great things. This is what we read about Stephen. Then, if you see, of the seven, there's one more man, Philip. Philip is mentioned there. 
And if we read the chapter following, you know, we'll come to that. But in chapter 8, we read about Philip who goes to Samaria. And in Samaria, there's revival because of Philip. Right? Because God used Philip. Right? Great outpouring, people being saved, etc. Okay. Right. So let's look at uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 51. Okay, so 51 and 55, maybe. Um, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Who spoke these words? Okay. Who spoke these words? Okay, let's ask, uh, what's your name, sorry? Huh? Sri Radha. Okay, Sri Radha. So who spoke these words? Okay, so you you back up, and you okay you back up, and you'll see that um, verse two. Okay, right from verse two, Stephen is actually speaking. Okay, this is one of the seven, right? So Stephen starts speaking, and he goes, it's a long message, and uh, in verse fifty-one, this is what he says. Okay, so it's Stephen speaking to to those people who had actually you know, gathered around, who had arrested him, gathered around. So he says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So he's referring to them. He's saying, OK, you resist the Holy Spirit. Okay, So that's another reality, right? So you and I can resist the Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit is God. All powerful, all knowing, right? Present everywhere. He's God. We are finite, right? In our understanding, in our strength, right? Human beings. But we can resist the Holy Spirit. Which means to me, I need to be careful. God might be showing something, God might be wanting me to, you know, through his spirit, guiding me asking me to do some things, but I could very well resist the Holy Spirit. Right? So that's a danger. That's a reality, you know, as a as a believer. Okay. Okay, so we'll take a break and then we'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, and continue with this. Right. Okay.